good evening, everyone. And we will stand and we're going to get into the presence of the Lord. But Hebrews 10 and 25 says, And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encouraging one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. But I'm thankful to be here with everyone. Everyone that is in here brings something special into this place when they step in here. And I'm thankful the Lord has allowed us the opportunity to be together. I'm thankful that he allowed his presence to be in here the way it was Sunday. My faith is really stronger just to experience and the things that we got to experience Sunday morning. And I'm looking for that same spirit to move in this place tonight. But we're going to go into a time of prayer. And if, the, if you have a need, just let it be known by the raising of your hand. And I know a God that can do all things. And he has the means to meet every need that is in this place. So let's just go together in prayer together. Lord, we're just so thankful to be here tonight looking for the things that you have for us, Lord, looking for you to move in a mighty way, God. I, I'm thankful for the blessings and the protection that you've placed upon each and every single one of us today. Lord, I'm praying over the needs that are in this house and the ones that are outside, God. I pray that there, if there is sickness, if there is any hurt, if there is any pain in the body, oh God, I'm looking for your hand to touch those ones. And Lord, just let your presence be known to them, oh God. Thank you.
Let's just praise him right now. Let's just praise him in this house right now for all the things that he's done, for everything that we have laid at his feet and he's forgot about them. I'm thankful that I have a God that loved me so much that he died for the sins that I made, the choices that was wrong, but he forgave me of all of it. I'm thankful that I know that. to giving right now and we have Giveify we got PayPal available at riverbendpentecostals.com you can send cash and checks to Riverbend Pentecostals 1031 Mill Street P.O. Box 477 New Madrid, Missouri 63869 text to give is 833-883-9311 and if you would let's just Say this prayer with faith. Upon the authority of your word, I have given, and it shall be given unto me. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings. I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs. Raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received, my whole family saved and serving God, perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in and I am blessed going out. And all that I do will prosper. In Jesus' name, amen.
thankful, thankful for the presence that is in this place. We will allow the youth and the kids to come forward. Y'all can be seated. Have the youth and the kids to come forward. We will get ready to pray for y'all. And If you would, let's just stretch our hands forward and let's just pray over these young ones right now. Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for everything that you are doing in their lives, Lord. I pray that your word is made known to them, Lord. I, I pray that you let them see that they are chosen for such a time as this to go into their schools and their communities, God, and just spread everything that your word says that they can spread. And, Lord, I just pray that you protect them. They protect their homes. Lord, let them be a safe place. And, Lord, let them just let your light shine through them everywhere that they go. Jesus. Braxton, y'all can go back. We get ready to turn it over to Pastor. Thankful for this teaching, this making me be more aware of my manners everywhere that I am and try to make sure that I'm being respectful and kind in every place of business that I go into, but it's challenging sometimes because sometimes we don't always want to have good manners, but thankful for a pastor that preaches the truth. Oh, thank you, thank you Brother Terrence. Praise the Lord, everybody. The Lord. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. I got a little reverb going on up here. I think that thing resets or something every time, but we'll get it lined out someday. Uh, it, I'm probably not the one that needs a extra loudness. I've been told more than once that I don't even need a microphone, but my voice needs me to have a microphone. If you get a chance before you leave tonight, Take a walk over to the Riverbend Kids Room. The ceiling is done over there, and it looks marvelous. It looks wonderful. It completely changed the looks of that room, and I'm very grateful for Antonio Rogers, a contractor from here in town, who was willing to come do that for us and gave us a very good price. And... Uh, um, and uh, I got him coming to do a little bit more work. My door's rotted out in my office. and need to put a canopy up so it doesn't rot again. But uh, very, very pleased. I, I'd like for you to take a look at it uh, to where the, the children are. Do we have enough? More than enough? That stinks. Um, thank you, brother. What's that? That's what I'm talking about. It's, it's all right. These two people on the front row didn't come in until about five minutes ago. I ain't calling out their name or nothing, but I'm just, just them two. And it wasn't Sister Leanne. We're kind of going to continue in the ministry of please and thank you, though, Though it's not, uh, it is not even defined as such and won't look as such, but ultimately it's about, uh, about how you treat people. And uh, folks, we can't stop working on that. If you have the Holy Ghost, you do not have the luxury of allowing other people's behavior to dictate your manners or lack thereof. Be nice, especially if you got the Holy Ghost. If you can't, if you got the Holy Ghost and you cannot be nice, I question whether you really got the Holy Ghost or not. Uh, it ain't my call, you understand, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about it tonight, and and. Uh, uh, we just will dive off into it. 
And I'm so happy to see everybody here tonight. Thank you for coming. It's a good-looking congregation, as always. And, and we're not growing in leaps and bounds, but we're growing every service. The river bend's growing. And uh, we, we'll probably come to you if we can make it to the first of the year. We're probably going to come to you and really try to ramp up our efforts in giving toward a, uh, a multi-purpose building because we already need it for elements and recovery. That's not an exaggeration. We already need it. We had to set out extra chairs for elements the last two or three weeks. We need where we can divide and, and then fill up two rooms. Come on, somebody. Why not? Why not? So uh, we, we have a little over $20,000 in our building fund right now, which is incredible. We're very grateful for that. But we need about six times that much. About $125,000 will get us under roof in a, in a metal multipurpose building like what we want that will be able to house our youth and be able to house our recovery ministry. And we'll put a, well, we'll put a bodacious kitchen in it. And uh, where we can, like right now, I want to have some church dinners, but we can't have a whole church dinner here. We ain't got room. Thank God for that. Thank God for that. But maybe we'll, when it gets cool, we'll try to have one out in the biggest room known to man outside. <laughs> We're going to talk about relationships tonight. And I'm going to preface, this is not in my notes, but I'm going to preface these comments. Our world doesn't really know how to have healthy relationships anymore. We really believe and I know I've said this, and I know I'm a smart aleck sometimes, but we really believe if we've got 1,000 or 1,500 or 2,000 or even 35 friends on Facebook that we got a big network of friends. No, you don't. No, you don't. Uh-uh. We, we really struggle, e even in the church. If you hang out by yourself all the time, you're out of the will of God. Oh, thank you, Sister Stephanie. I appreciate that. But all of our isolated homebodies just said, don't believe it. <laughs> well, you've been wrong before, and you'll be wrong again. But right now, I'm right. And we need to learn how to do better. Last night, I understand the ladies had about 40 ladies came to the crazy glasses night or some... Uh, Doing all right, getting good grades. Future's so bright, I gotta wear shades. Some of y'all don't know nothing about that, do you? Huh? Yeah, I know about it. I don't I can't tell how, but I know about it. The need for relationship is something that we share with God. Because we were created to be in relationship with Him. That's why we were created to be in relationship with God. And after he created Adam and Eve, he was the one that became aware that Adam was not good alone. So he made Eve. And we have to understand that it was God who determined Adam needed Eve, not Adam. Because Adam had no frame of reference for relationship other than that which he shared with God. But the Lord recognized that Adam needed relationship. So we can glean from this that healthy, earthly relationships with other people is the will of God. I'm getting more amens and more that's right on this, but y'all just make sure you keep doing it. God came walking in the garden in the cool of the day to see Adam and Eve, to be with them as he was known to do, which manifests his desire for companionship. We sometimes get them, I feel a little Holy Ghost moving, I got to say this right now. We get a messed up idea of God that he sets up there in heaven waiting until we pray and beckon for him to come down and take care of our stuff. And the Bible doesn't back that up. 
As a matter of fact, the Bible says that he came to them. He came looking for them. How many, how many people have ever considered your relationship with God from his viewpoint? I guarantee you we don't think of it much because we're too busy asking him to come bring us stuff. And the truth is, he's always been there. He said, I'm the God that's at hand, not a God that's far off. The nearest thing we can experience to the relationship that God desires to have with us is in the marriage relationship. It is the most powerful relationship on the face of the earth. I don't care what the world has made out of marriage. I don't care what the, uh, what the world says about marriage. Marriage was God's idea, and it was designed to work like he made it work. The reason why marriage doesn't work most of the time, and that's a true statement, 52% of all marriages end in divorce. The reason why it doesn't work all of the time is because of us, not God. But we can make a strong argument that the most powerful basis for a strong marriage is friendship more than anything else. Well, it might be tough tonight, but I've been there before. The concept of relationship from God's perspective and man's is a refrain found throughout Scripture. The Lord spoke to Moses face to face, the Scripture says, as a man speaks to his friend. Abraham was called the friend of God. David had an understanding of God that one might could argue nobody's had before or since, and he was a friend of God. Then with the revelation of Jesus Christ and the choosing of his disciples, he surrounded himself with friends. He called those disciples his friends. In the book of John, friends rather than servants. People that followed him being with him as friends rather than servants. The difference was, does anybody remember? I taught you the difference, and it was a powerful moment, but it couldn't just stay here in these walls. What's the difference in friends and servants? He said, I tell my friends what I'm doing. Remember when we talked about getting together and making plans with God, sharing strategy with God? Okay. We are, in fact, referred to as friends of Jesus because the greatest love is one that lays down his life for his friends, and Jesus Christ died for you. And our friendship is assured if we obey his commandments. He said, you are my friends if you do whatsoever I tell you. And we are called, we are all called as witnesses of Jesus Christ to make disciples of others by teaching and exampling our own relationship with God. And you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. So our witness is exampling our relationship with God. The first step in having healthy relationships is understanding yourself. Now, I'm going to say this. The premarital counseling curriculum that I have and that I love, though I've had difficulty getting people to go through it like I want them to, and that's probably just as much my fault as anybody's because all I got to do is say, go through this or I ain't marrying you. Matter of fact, I think that just sounds right. Go through this or I ain't marrying you. No, please hear me when I tell you this right now. No relationship you will ever have on this plane, no relationship you will ever have will fix you, complete you, or make you happy. That relationship doesn't exist. 
Now, if you go through Simbus, which is saving your marriage before it starts, you will learn that's one of the most powerful myths of marriage is that I'm going to find somebody that completes me, that makes me whole and makes me happy. It can't happen. It's impossible. Because your happiness, your completion, you being fixed is between you and the Lord and is already in you. I said it's already in you. Now, we're going to prove that by the Bible. James, you like this, Brother Ronnie, your favorite book. The book of James, chapter 1, we're going to cover verses 17 through 25. Here's what it says. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Where do you reckon above's talking about? Heaven. And cometh down from the Father of lights. What do you think that means? Why do you think that's God? There you go, Brother Larry. It ain't rocket science. He said, let there be light and there was light. Just so you want to know who we're talking about, not some other God, but the God that said, let there be light. He's the one that's giving gifts to you or giving gifts to the world. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, meaning there he never changes, neither shadow of turning. Look here. Good gifts and perfect gifts, they're referring to the same gift. It's not two different gifts. It's the same gift. Good refers to the gift of... I wish I could just jump ahead, but you got to stay with me now. Good refers to the gifts are inherently or basically good. They're good for you. They're good for others. They only exist for the goodness of God to be manifest in this world. He will not give you a gift so you can win a fight with somebody. So you can prove somebody wrong. So you can elevate yourself. The gifts of God are not for that. They're good. And that ain't good. It feels good, but it ain't good. There will be no opportunity for you to use the gifts that God gives you to justify yourself or serve your own agenda. The gifts of God are only to fulfill the purpose of God. Perfect, man, I like this. I'm not talking about what I'm saying right now, but where I'm going. Perfect refers to the gifts of God being complete, mature, and lacking nothing. So when he gives them, he gives them all away. Right? Okay. And these gifts are gifts, not wages. You can't earn them. Now, he said they cometh down. What does ETH mean? Continually. It's not just a one-time deal. But continually the Lord is bestowing or pouring out gifts. He gives them continually and freely as opposed to sparingly and sporadically. But they always come from above. And he is constant. There is no variableness in the Lord, no shadow of turning in the Lord. If you remember last Wednesday night, I spoke to us about getting delivered from trying to make the Lord like us. Where he thinks like us and I pray to him like he thinks like me. Because he don't. Okay, verse number 18. Y'all ready for this? Of his own will. Beget he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. That word beget is referring to the new birth experience. Not your first birth, but your new birth. Because our new birth, we're born again by the word and the will of God. And we are eligible to receive this new birth experience 
because God willed it. Not because he feels sorry for us, not because he feels obligated, but because it is his will. And because the fact that we are born again in his will, according to his purpose, it carries with it that same purpose. And the purpose is, what is it? Look in this scripture, James 1 and 18. What is the purpose? You're about to say it. Yeah, don't be shy. It's there. I told Brother Larry, it ain't rocket science. It's right there. That we should be a kind of first fruits. Everybody say first fruits of his creation. Now hear this. You and I cannot know the will of God with a carnal mind and an unregenerate spirit. That's why we got to have the Holy Ghost inside of us. We need the Holy Ghost in us so we can comprehend, understand the leading and the instructions of God because without the influence of his spirit, most of everything he tells us to do don't make any sense. We need the Holy Ghost. Number one, you need the Holy Ghost to be saved. John chapter 3, verse number 3 and verse number 5 tell us you've got to be born again to see the kingdom of God and to go. You've got to be born again. The Bible says very clearly, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. we got to have the Holy Ghost. But it's bigger than just going to heaven. The Holy Ghost is what transforms us into what God made us to be. Now, God help me. Now, what did our first verse say, verse number 17? You don't have to go back there, Sister Heidi. But it said, every good gift and perfect gift comes from the Lord. Right? Now, this verse right here said, he transformed us, regenerated us, birthed us again with the word of truth so that for the purpose of, of us being a kind of first fruits of his creature. Now, first fruits is a giving term. Right? Right? The first fruits is what Abel brought to the Lord as an offering way back in the book of Genesis. The first fruits is the best of the the best of the best the cream of the crop, the first of the first. Can I get an amen from somebody? Amen. That we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. See, first fruits is tied to the principle of giving. The first fruits denotes giving of the best. Who is the first fruits? We're the first fruits. I said, we're the first fruits. Yes. That you should be, he said, I, God, have mercy. I gave you the Holy Ghost and you were born again by the word of truth so you would be a kind of first fruits in the world. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. Ooh. Somebody's thinking right now, pastor must be nuts. I'm just, ah, he must be crazy. I just barely, I just barely made it through today. I just barely survived today. The jury's still out whether I'm going to be around when the trumpet sounds or not. But I want somebody to know that the book says that he birthed you again, that he filled you with his spirit so you would be a kind of first fruits, the best of the best, the cream of the crop. Let me tell you something, honey. He didn't put you in this world because he needed somebody to fill it up. He put you in this world because he's got a plan for you and he's got a purpose for you and he wants you to make a difference. Oh, come on now. The angel of the Lord came unto Mary. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail thou that are highly favored. But if I'm reading the book right, 
when you get filled with the Spirit, you carry the same favor. Should have brought pizza tonight. Something. Look here. It's got to sink in. Me? You talking about me? Yep. Ooh, I feel Jesus in here. This truth is about to get a hold of somebody. I ain't naive enough to think it's going to get a hold of everybody, but it's about to get a hold of somebody. Look here. The first fruits of his creatures, the best of the best, that's us. That's you and I. God requires we give him the first fruits of our increase. That's what the book said, Proverbs said, give him the first fruits. That's what tithing is, the best of the best, the first fruit. And in a manner of speaking, you and I, Y'all are not getting this yet, but I have faith that you will. When we give God the first fruits, we are telling him that we give him the best of the best. Every good and perfect gift cometh from above, from the Father of lights, in whom there is no variableness or shadow of turning. Every good and perfect gift cometh from above. I filled you with my spirit so you would be a type of first fruits in the world, in creation. Has it sunk into anybody's head yet that he gave gifts to men? He gave us food and he gave us water, but that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is God gave the world you. And that's why he don't want me acting like a donkey to everybody. Oh, now it's starting to make some sense. That's why I can't give everybody a piece of my mind. That's why I can't be ugly and I can't be bigoted and I can't be rude. Because he brought me here, Sister I to be the best of the best. Think about it. Think about it, Brother Derek. What does it say? Lead me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. You know what that means? That means he's given... Uh, he's given me everything I need that I'm a good gift uh, and I'm a perfect gift. Uh, I got everything I need to be what God wants me to be in this world for his name's sake. That means something now when you, whoo, man, are y'all in the same service as me? That's why you go down in the name because when you come up out of the water carrying the name of Jesus Christ, that's when he says, look at my baby, look at my creation, look at who I made to come into this world. You were not made to be defeated. You were not made to be depressed. You were not made to be discouraged. You were not made to be a failure, but you were made to win. That's why we sing crazy, goofy songs like, no matter what the weapon is, I want you to know that I win. He didn't put you here to lose. So if you're going through something right now, sweetie, you can rest assured. I shared it with the men. I'm going to share it with all of you. Brother Tenney said, the Lord is more concerned with your development than he is with your comfort. So if you're going through some stuff right now, it ain't going to beat you. Say, well, what if I die? Are you serious? Are you serious? 
That's what Sister Mangan said. She's like 98 years old. And they said, you're going to have to do this, you're going to have to do this, or you might die. She said, are you threatening me? Do you think you can threaten me with death? Oh, grave, where's your victory? Death, where's your sting? The last trump. You know what it says, Brother Terrence? The dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain. I'm talking about a new perspective. There's a new reason to get this right, folks. You, you say, well, I came here and I decided to be an astronaut and I decided to make millions of dollars. No, you didn't. The hand of God is on your life. And if he's done anything in your life, if there's any blessing in your life, it is far to only fill his purpose. Is that not what the Bible says right there? And the book plainly says, if we give him the first fruits, he's going to bless everything else. You have what it takes. You have what it takes to be the best that God has to offer to your world. You are one of God's perfect, good and perfect gifts that he gave to this world. You know something, Brother Shannon? We don't believe that. They sang that song, I am who you say I am. We better not all be singing it because some of us was lying when we did. Think about, are you, are you hearing this, Brother Blake? Am I making sense right now? I got a responsibility. I ain't here just to pay a few bills and get up and go to work and come home and go to bed and get up and go to work and come home and go to bed and get up and go to work, but I'm on a mission. You're on a mission. And every good and perfect gift, has it clicked with anybody yet? He don't have no other kind. You really think there's a heaven outlet? You think there's a God's workmanship outlet? No, Sister Callie, because you know what happens when we are marred in the hand of the potter? <laughs> think about what they said. You got to see that. What did they tell him? Every good and perfect gift comes from above. From who? The Father of lights. What does that mean? If I let him, he'll just make me again a new vessel as seems good to the potter. What in the world are we worrying about all the time and stressing about all the time like we ain't going to make it? Huh? Does this make sense, Brother Christian? I hope. I hope. I'm doubting Thomas, but I hope. Now here we got to go. That's why it's so important to come to Bible study. Because you don't learn stuff like this on Sunday. True. Look here. You are one of God's best gifts given to the world. And it's important that we be transformed into fulfilling that purpose. And nothing else matters if we don't. Verse 19, here we go. Then he starts telling you how to accomplish these things. Anybody know what wherefore means? What'd you say, Sister Nadine? 
That's exactly what it means. So, since, what's, what's the so about? That's the way it is. What's that talking about? All right, Sister Heidi, you're going to have to back me up. I don't like to. So, since you know that you are a kind of first fruits of his creature, so, say, man, Pastor, I just want to be a church member. I'm being a little bit facetious, but that's kind of like it is. I just want to come on Sunday. You listen to me, Brother Allen? I want to come on Sunday, and I want to come on Wednesday. I'm going to pay my dues so I get to sit where I want, hear the kind of music I want at least once in a while, <laughs> preach from my favorite scripture two or three times a year, and make sure I get out in time to have a good supper and take a good nap on Sunday. What'd you say? No, you can't get in that program. <laughs> you can if you want to, but they won't like you. <laughs> what this next verse says, verse 19 says, now that I've told you who you are, now I'm going to tell you how to be. Make sense? My beloved brethren, he means it. You special, powerful, beautiful group of people. What are we talking about tonight? Healthy relationships. And the first step to having a healthy relationship is understand yourself and come to the truth that there ain't nobody out there. Y'all know, I know half of y'all don't believe that. There ain't nobody out there going to complete you. That ain't nothing but a good line in a movie. It ain't real. Nobody has the power to make you happy. Nobody. But we keep on acting like they do. Oh, I'm going to cause trouble, but I, I, I'm, I ain't scared. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man. Now, who do you think he's talking about? Nope. Oh, all right, sister. How did take me back a verse? Everybody that gets who they really are. Everybody who understands who you really are in the kingdom of God. That's who he's talking to. Every one of y'all. Since you know you are a gift from God to your world, let every man be swift to hear. You mean to tell me that the most important thing, the first commandment, if you please, to those who realize they're the first fruits, the gift of God to their world, is to shut your mouth and listen. Say, it don't say shut your mouth. You can't bump your gums and listen at the same time. See, I think we can. You know good and well your kids can't because you tell them that all the time. And your mama told you that. Let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. So understanding 
our origins and our purpose, there's some principles I have to follow. I got to be swift to hear. That means hurry up to hear, be eager to hear, strive to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Now, I'm going to try to say something right now, and I'm going to try to say it nicely, but the truth is ain't really no way to say it nicely. If you take, if we take what I'm teaching, slobber on it, love on it, rub it on our head and on our arms and get it all over us, but leave it on this seat when you walk out that door, it ain't going to do you a dime's worth of good. Here's the first thing that's got to happen for you to do you some good. Does anybody know what the first thing got to happen for it to do me some good? It's for me. Not just realize I need it, but this Bible study, the Lord would have gave it to pastor if you was the only one in the room tonight. There's going to come a time, the book says, in Genesis chapter 6, right before the flood, which is, Brother Terrence, a type of the earth right before the rapture, right? As it was in the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Is that not the Bible? Uh-huh. You know what he said about those knuckleheads, knotheads, hardheads, stiff neck, crazy thinking people in Genesis 6? I ain't going to mess with y'all forever. Ain't that what he said? I ain't going to mess with y'all forever. Okay. At some point, I, I felt this before I came tonight. This may just be my imagination, but I don't think it is. We got people that don't come to Bible study no more because they say I teach the same thing all the time. Guess what? I do. You want to know why? Whole lot of us ain't getting it. We're going to have to get this. This is what the Bible means. Holy Ghost filled people that wreck. I feel the Holy Ghost so rich right now that recognize who they're supposed to be in their world do not live their life running off at the mouth. Here we go. Swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Here's what wrath is. Y'all ready for this? Anger fueled by prejudice. Predetermined biases that serve to evoke an inappropriate response from us. I'm going to summarize it for you. Y'all ready? A judgmental attitude. Here we are again. Think about this. Some of y'all have said it. Some of y'all have said it to me. I just wasn't, I don't think very quick on my feet. I'm one of those people, like somebody say something to me, and I'm like, duh, 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 duh. oh, I love you, and I'll pray for you. And then an hour later, cha-ching, I could have lit them up. I think the Lord held me back. Look here. You reconcile this scripture with, that's just the way I am. That's just who I am. I don't care who you are, 
But if you're going to make a difference in your world and be who God called you to be, you're going to have to do what he says. He doesn't say stop wanting to speak. He said just don't. I don't know how many of you were at Parma last night, but that's kind of like what I said. I got these stupid going over and over and over and over in my head, and finally the Lord said, why are you even listening to yourself? Ignore it. That ain't who you are. That ain't who you want to be. Your body and your mind are just used to 51 years of doing it wrong. Is that who you are? No, sir. It's not who I am. Does thinking it make that who you are? No, sir. It doesn't. Then ignore yourself. You say, well, I don't know how you do that. I really didn't know how either, but I just listened to the Lord, and guess what? Went away. I wasn't even wrestling with it no more. You know why I keep ever, ever keep on wrestling with it? Because I want to. Look here. The wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. That's why we cannot use our wrath. That's why we got to be swift to hear. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. Slow to speak and slow to wrath. Wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Period. End of discussion. Here we go. I'm going to make it spiritual. Amen. Look, why do we keep on putting this to the test? As if the next time that I show myself is going to be the time when the Lord says, good job, buddy. As if the next time is going to be the first time the Lord uses my ignorant behind to perform his perfect will. It's not happening. Why is it not happening? Because I'm not here to represent me or my feelings or my thoughts. I'm here to represent the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Nisi. I'm here to represent the Master. I'm here to represent the Savior. I am not here for me. Behavior birthed in me the carnal me placed there by tradition or previous experience, etc., but not by God. Here's what happens. When I'm swift to hear, let me tell you something, Brother Blake. I got the Holy Ghost because that verse number a while ago, 17, said I've been born again by the word of truth. I got the Holy Ghost. And look at here. When we think, I promise you, when I have always read Swift to Hear, I'm thinking about me and you having a conversation and I need to stop talking so much. That's not what's happening. Swift to Hear means that I stop and I say, what's going on, Holy Ghost? What you got for me? This has been asked to me before. Well, what if he don't say nothing? Then ease on down, ease on down the road. Because if he don't give me nothing to say, guess what I'm supposed to say? <laughs> nothing. Well, I don't, I don't like it. I want to be right. I want to be justified. But if I got the Holy Ghost... I'm not going to be justified, nor am I going to wish to be justified by people. 
if I got the Holy Ghost, I'm already justified by him. All right. All right. I think I done caused a little trouble tonight, but I'm going out of town for a couple of days. If y'all decide to fire me, y'all call me. I'm going to call somebody and find out what the numbers are going to be. See if I can hit. <laughs> Look here. Verse 21. Let me tell you something. If you was waiting on Christmas, according to the Bible study clock, we'd be having it every Monday morning. Because these 45 minutes or so on Wednesday nights, fastest 45 minutes of my whole week. Just goes by in a blur. Look here. He said, be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Me being swift to hear allows God to speak a truth to me that will dictate my actions, not my carnal self. Because even if I got the Holy Ghost, if I talk too fast, I ain't speaking Jesus ease. I'm speaking GLEs, and it's always wrong. Look here, verse 21. Wherefore, what's that mean, Sister Nadine? So, so if you're the first fruits, and if you've been put here by God, be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, because the wrath of man is not ever going to work the righteousness of God. You're not going to accomplish the will of God by blowing up and going off. Ever. And if you do that, so now the way to get good at swift... This is some powerful stuff, y'all. I done went down that aisle like 25 times since I came over here. This is powerful. Y'all got to get this. You know how I get to be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath? Wherefore, lay apart all, everybody say all, all. filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and is a conjunction connecting two thoughts. So when I lay aside all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, I'm positioning myself to receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save me. Now look at here. We got to talk about this just a minute before I close for the night. In an effort man, to prepare myself to be able to be obedient to God, swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. In a, an effort to prepare myself to be obedient to God. In an effort to prepare myself to be obedient to God, step one is get rid of, that's what lay apart means, all filthiness you know what filthiness is? Anything immoral. Here's what I felt powerfully in my spirit. You can't keep watching nasty movies, listening to nasty music with a whole bunch of cursing and nudity and sexuality 
Here we go. And violence. I ain't got done yet. You can't keep surfing Facebook. Say, well, there ain't nothing bad on Facebook. Is that true now? Because you know what happens when you go to surfing? S scrolling, excuse me, not surfing, scrolling. I just showed my age. You know what you do when you scroll Facebook? You are saying anybody and everybody on this little phone right here, welcome to my mind. Welcome to my heart. Welcome to my life. I saw something, ironically enough, somebody sent me on Facebook of this little video, and a husband and his wife were standing by the washing machine. And she was flat out. It, 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 does, it just gave the one say, buddy, she was. Mm -hmm. And he was standing there gritting his teeth and getting beady eyes, and here's what it said. Me getting madder and madder at Becky, who works with my wife, and I don't even know her. That's happened to me. I found myself wanting to fight a stranger. Oh, my goodness. If there's ever anything that proves what this scripture is, if you want to get in a position to make a difference in your world, you're going to have to stop being like the world. And you're going to have to stop letting the world determine your likes and your dislikes and where you go and what you do. And you're going to have to learn to tell yourself no about some things. Oh, man. I, does that make sense, Brother Ronnie? We open up ourselves to so much. It's just available. Not only that, we're letting our kids be open up to it. And you wonder, how come I can't flow in the Holy Ghost? And how come I can't hear the voice of God? Well, what other voices is he having to compete with? Hmm? I, I'm, just, I'm just saying. The book says if you want to be able to be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath, you're going to have to get rid of all the filthiness out of your life. Here we are, Brother Shannon. You know how I wanted that to work? Everything the Lord don't want me to do, I want him to take it away from me. I've had people tell me, many people tell me. That's like, I'm watching too many, many bad movies on TV, Lord. Would you, if you don't want me to watch these movies, would you strike my TV tonight? Do what? Yeah, there you go. Say, well, we ain't doing that. Use a lie. Because y'all get on Facebook and recommend nasty movies to other church members. Oh, no, you didn't. Oh, yes, I did. Y'all get on there and compare notes about these TV series that ain't nothing but filth. What do you think about this, Brother Skipper? I got a communication. <laughs> I was praying one time to ask you on the TV down there. Yep. That we were trying to watch for the kids. Uh-huh. Would you pray for something to happen <laughs> next week to the Jews that killed all the kids? Okay. Is everybody, I, I'm about to close, but I had to get to this part. Yeah. Think about this just a minute. I don't think there's nothing wrong with that. We're not debating whether it's right or wrong. Right. 
The Lord said, if you want to be able to be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath, so you can be in your world what I created you to be in your world, you're going to have to get rid of the filthiness and superfluity. You know what that means? A overflow of wickedness. Because you can't receive the engrafted word because he ain't going to fight through hell to put it in you. Is this making sense, bro? Really, I hope it is. Because I felt such a powerful witness of that first fruits. You know what? Here's, here's what has to come into our mind. I, here's what you got to think. I, I can't have nothing to do with that stuff. Because I got a high calling on me. I came. I came from heaven to my world. I'm here for a purpose. I am here because God established me here. Say, I don't know if he does that or not. Well, Acts the 17th chapter says he does. It says he had determined our times before appointed and the boundaries of our habitation. So, folks, if we're going to have the revival that God wants us to have in our own life, we're going to have to make some changes. And he ain't coming to make them for us. God, help me. So here's what I'm saying. If you're rude to waitresses, if you're rude to coworkers, if you're rude to your husband or wife and your children, if you're ugly to people all the time, let me tell you what the problem is. You got too much ugliness in your mind and in your heart. Yeah. Say, well, I, I don't, um, what you watching, what you listening to, what you reading, who you giving access to. The Bible says if you want to have what I got for you, y'all remember me telling you, I'm going to close after this. I'm not done, but I'm going to close. Do y'all remember me telling you that a whole bunch of theologians want the book of James out of the Bible? You can read that and find it. Because you want to know why? They say James talks too much about works. This is Jesus' brother talking, folks. You know how powerful this is, brother? Does this make sense? Does this make sense? We fill our lives and our minds up with so much antichrist and then want to know why can't we feel God? Why can't we have a move of God? Why can't we grow? Why can't we become? Here we go. But I'm bored and there ain't nothing else to watch. Are you kidding me? I've been told that two times. Well, what am I going to watch if I don't watch bad things? What in the world? First off, there is good stuff to watch. Second of all, we watch it too much anyway. You can watch church from all over the world. You, here's, a, here's a great idea. Here's a great idea. Make friends with somebody and visit with them. Let me tell you something. You can stay at your cousin's house till midnight or one o'clock playing Monopoly if you want to. I ain't going to promise you that it's all going to be Christian-like. Y'all 
understand what I'm saying? We have pigeonholed ourselves into some kind of little old namby-pamby life, and we never even realized who we are. And the reason why we can't be who he called us to be is because we don't even know who we are. And the reason why we don't know who we are is we're letting the Kardashians pick our likes and our dislikes, and, and we're letting the real housewives of nowhere determine what's cool and what's pretty and what's not. And we're letting the, 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 the other people. I don't hardly know no new cool people. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? We just open ourselves up to people that don't even, listen, we let people that we've been called to reach lead us astray without even trying. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know Thus saith the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, he loves us. He gave everything for us. And he put you a good gift in this world. Oh, for grace to trust him more. I won't be like him. I want to trust him. I want to trust him. Stand with me if you would. I guess we'll come back to this next week if the Lord tarries. If he don't, I hope to see you there. I do not know if by the help of the Lord, if I have ever taught a more powerful or profound nuts and bolts Bible study than this one. But I read this in Romans the other day. I talked about it Sunday. It shook me, Brother Terrence, the way down deep inside when it said, and some believed and some didn't. And you know what I thought, Brother Shannon? If Paul could only reach some of them, But there's a hunger in this room right now to know him. And to not just know him, but to know me through him. To see me through his eyes. And to see how far he would go to help me become what he created me to be. But I got to meet him there. Lord Jesus, I love you. God, I love you. And I feel such a beautiful presence in this room. A, a, such a powerful calling. I, I think we're getting a hold of the same thing Paul got a hold of when he said, forgetting those things which are behind me. And reaching. Reaching for those things that are before me. I press toward the mark 
for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So, Lord, I pray that these words don't fall on deaf ears, stony ground, the turn road, among the rocks, the thorns. I pray they fall on good ground. And I pray, Lord, that we with an honest heart approach you. I, I see their faces, Lord, and it scares me. It scares me because the time to play games is over. And I, and I didn't come preaching a, a last day message of fear and, and hiding from the mark of the beast and all of that. I came tonight teaching a Bible study for people to recognize how beautiful and powerful and filled with goodness and perfectness that they are everything they need to be to become who you want them to be. It's all there. There's nothing new. There's not a new work. There's not a new sacrifice. There's not a new miracle you need to perform. God, you created us with the talents and the abilities and the giftings. We just got to position ourselves, led by the Spirit and not the flesh. So powerful to me. Pray, God, that you let this not soon leave us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Any announcements? Yep, 12 hours of prayer Saturday. We're doing it on the sign up. The church text that I know a whole lot of y'all know that number. Because y'all texted a whole lot. Y'all keep us praying all the time. It's a good thing. Let's come here and pray Saturday. We're going to have a move of God. God bless you. You're dismissed.